Hello! I'm going to go through the steps necessary to configure my fur shader to turn this kind of drowned rodent looking version of myself into a nice fluffy boy like me. Alright, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is install the shader. Click on Assets, Import Package, Custom Package. Now the current version that I'm working on is this 2.0, so I'm going to grab that. Hit import. And it's installed. Now, in order to actually use the shader, we have to assign it to the skinned mesh renderer. On my avatar, the skinned mesh renderer is up here. If I click on body, and look over here, it says skinned mesh renderer. And this is where the shaders are actually assigned. So if I click on where it says standard, I get a list of other shaders and I can select Warren's Fast Fur, click on that, and Fast Fur. And there we go. The shader is now actually installed, but uh, if we zoom in, you can see that, well, it doesn't look right yet. So let's start fixing that. The way that my shader works is it has two custom bitmaps that control the shape of the fur. Um, now, other shaders I've used, they expect you to use Photoshop um, or GIMP to make those yourself. I don't expect you to do that. So if you go up here, whoops, click on this, and you see where it says Fur Shape Data, click on that, Generate Blank Map. It creates the first blank map, and you can see it's just kind of a bluish gray. And the second bitmap that it needs. If I click on hairs and I'll expand that, click here to generate a hair map. And now if I zoom in, you can see we've got fur finally. It's all still kind of gross looking, but well we have fur. And this map it's randomly generated. It's a whole bunch of little dots. Each of those dots controls uh, the tinting and the height and the highlights of the, each individual hair. Now, at this point, I'd recommend just start playing with all these different sliders, seeing what they all do. Uh, for example, you can turn the hair density down. Oh, we get big, thick hairs. Turn it up. Whoa, fine hairs. Uh, put it wherever you want, and you can play with the thickness, make that nice and thick, long hairs, add some gravity. Uh, there's a whole lot of different options to play with, uh, but I'm just going to go directly to the grooming portion. The way that the grooming works is, if you remember, your skinned mesh render object is here in the body on my avatar. If you look down here, this thing that says fur grooming, drag this onto your skinned mesh object. This is found in the Fast Fur Shader Assets folder. You can do what it says, and I'm going to drag it onto the body. And there it is right there. And if I hit play, we get the grooming utility. Now, I apologize. This utility is pretty crude. Uh, but I didn't want people to have to try to use Photoshop to edit these data files themselves, so I made this utility. It still needs a lot of work, but it does function and it gets the job done. The first thing I want to fix is the face. If you hold down the right mouse button, you can scroll the camera. WASD will move you around. EQ goes up and down. And the mouse wheel controls how fast or slow you move. So to fix this, I'm going to use a, a weaker brush. That way it'll give a smoother appearance. And I'm going to length on minimum and just kind of go around. Now each time you click, it takes off a specific amount. It won't take off more. So each time you you Press the button, it takes off a little bit more. And I want to leave some fuzz. Yeah, not bad. Okay, that looks good for now. Let's uh, do something about his eyes. So let's make this smaller. And like that. 
little bit more. Okay. And get right in close with a smaller brush again. And finally, use a strong, tiny brush to just get this hair right out of those eyes. Now, I'm just going to do a quick job here. I would spend more time on this if it was my actual avatar, but for now, this will do. Okay is out of the eyes mostly. I want to fix these whiskers. Um, it's better to do the big features like the face first before you do the smaller features like the whiskers. Now I could very carefully go like this, but the problem is when I get close to here, I'm going to take off face fur as well. That's what this sphere button is for. This is a three-dimensional cursor, but if you click this, it tries to convert it to two-dimensional. Now, I say try because, uh, I, it, like I said, I, I'm trying to make this utility work, but it's kind of rough. Now that I've turned on the 2D cursor, as long as I don't get too close, it won't jump to the rest of the face. So I can just trim those whiskers. Now, here's some nightmare fuel for you. Uh, if you look inside the mouth, Ah, we have a hairy tongue. We have hair on our teeth. Yeah, that's uh, pretty disturbing. So let's go ahead and make sure we're not using the spherical because otherwise you accidentally can take the fur off the cheeks while you're doing this. Uh, and very carefully try to remove this. Uh, this just takes a while. I'm going to go ahead and speed things up and do the claws and the all-important beans and whatnot. And when I'm done, I will stop fast forwarding. Okay, I made a bunch of mistakes there, uh, but fortunately that's what the undo and redo buttons are for. I managed to get a pretty decent, you know, not bad, not bad. Now that the length is taken care of, I want to start fixing this. Now in my avatar, as you can see, these stretchy parts of my face make the hair look all more like ribbons. So... That's what this density adjustment is for. I'm going to click on that and turn up the density. If I put it to maximum, well, that's way too dense. Let's put it there. Nah, not bad. Somewhere like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And let's just do it carefully. Not too bad. Okay, pretty good. Um, yeah, that'll do. Final step with the grooming process is this third button, the combing. I'm just going to put that up to there. Pretty strong. And if we turn this up, you can see that wherever we move the cursor, the hair will comb in that direction. So I'm just going to start combing. Oops, actually, no, I'm going to turn off the mirror. I find that it works better if you don't use the mirror for this because you don't really want your fur to be perfectly symmetrical, the combing.
All right, now that this avatar has been fully groomed, it's time to go play around with all these different settings. You'll probably do it in the opposite order, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I wanted to get a groomed avatar first. And before I do start playing with these settings, I'm going to actually switch over to my real avatar that I use in game because I've got all the settings the way I like them and I'm going to explain what each of them does. First two settings are the quality settings. If you set them to anything beyond the first two settings, it'll give you a warning. Uh, it's not that the shader is really that slow with the higher quality. It's just out of courtesy for other players. Please use the faster settings if you're going to be using this in a public lobby. If you're planning on using it you know, in a private lobby, then go ahead and crank them up. Make it look as nice as you want. I'm going to leave them on the highest settings just for now. Do that. We can adjust the total combing strength. And this is actually really useful for one very important reason. If you look, all the combing has gone wonky. Uh, that is because of the resolution of the textures involved. They simply don't have enough precision to allow nice straight hairs. So things go crazy. So you kind of have to find just the right amount of combing. I'm just going to hit undo. There we go. And there's still a few wonky hairs, but... Again, there's a limitation to the resolution of the textures, so sometimes you just get wonky hairs. Next options are the hairs themselves. Hair density, we've already seen what we can do with that. Do that. Highlights. If we zoom right on in, you can see that the different hairs have different colors. Highlights makes them either darker or lighter. And color shifting, it's kind of a false tinting control. If you want to have like a sparkly type co colors on your fur, you can use this. I'm just going to leave them like that. Clipping I don't use, but what that does is makes your hair taller and clips it. So the tops have all been shaved off evenly. Like I said, I don't use that though. The hair pattern map generator... If you want, you can play with this. I'm not going to do it right now, but this will allow you to generate these random maps, these things here, but you can generate them uh, different shapes and sizes of hairs. I'm going to leave that, though, and move on to the next section, which is the markings. Now, if you look closely, you can see that my fur... has little ridges. And those are being caused by this markings map. And if I turn up the visibility, you can see, there you go. Now this pattern was generated randomly. Uh, let me turn down the density here so you can see it better. There it is. This is generated using this fur markings generator. And you don't have to use this. If you want to use uh, a real zebra print or spots or whatever, you can go ahead and use that. Otherwise, you can play with these things here and you can make all sorts of random patterns by playing with the hormone levels. I won't go into all the details here, but this random generator, it can make spots, it can make stripes, uh, it can't make really complicated stuff like leopard spots, simply because it's a simplification. It's not accurate to what how you know, real biology works. Uh, this is the algorithm that Alan Turing came up with, so uh, he had to do all these calculations by hand, so it's not a very complicated algorithm. One useful feature of the fur markings, even if you don't actually want to have stripes or spots, is that you can use them to make the surface of your fur uneven. So look at my the edges here, and you'll see if I turn this up, it gives a more matted appearance. Now, that might not look that good up close, but when you're far away, it makes the fur a lot more visible. So this is kind of one of those toss-ups. Uh, do you want to be more visible at a long range, or do you want to look nicer and smoother up close? Uh, even if the visibility is turned off completely, you can still use the map to make the fur uneven. Now the lighting. Lighting, if we zoom on in here and look up inside the fur, you can see that 
down deep, it is darker. That is the occlusion. You could make that weaker or stronger. You can also have it penetrate a small amount right at the start. And the reason that I need that is otherwise I end up looking like I've got a dirty face. And I don't really want to have a dirty face, so you can have it penetrate a little bit before the occlusion starts. You can see the effect there. Just play with these settings until you get something that you like. The next two settings are best demonstrated down here by my tail. Okay. Light wraparound. As you can see, the light, when it hits, it's normally stopped right about here. But if you turn up the light wraparound, it simulates the light wrapping around, hence the name, and it catching on the tips of the fur. Now this isn't accurate. Uh, this is just a gross approximation, and uh, it's fast. That's why it's not accurate. The other setting is this glowing effect. This is subsurface scattering. Now, if I turn it off, you can see that's where the light actually hits. It stopped right there. But this simulates the light going into the fur, bouncing around, and coming out so that you can see it. Now, this subsurface scattering only applies to viewing from behind. So it disappears. If I start to go this way, you can see it fades out. Hang on, I'll go like this. There it is glowing down there. But as we move to the side, it disappears. Again, similar to the light wraparound, this is not accurate. Uh, it's going to be wonky if you try to look and see, was that realistic? No. No, it's not. But it's very, very fast. Next effects are the wind. I'm going to come up here to my floofers. And you can control the speed. Pretty straightforward. You can adjust what direction they're blowing from. So that side, that side. Um, for reference, if you are facing the mirror in the starting room in VR chat, this will match what you see in the mirror. Vertical angle, have it blow up or down. And how much turbulence? Do you want it to be unsteady? Or do you want something nice and calm? And that's basically it. Yes, there are some debugging things that you can play with if you want to look at pretty rainbow colors, but I'm not going to go into what these things mean. They're for debugging. And that's it. That's uh, my shader in a nutshell. Um, I'm still working on it. I'm still adding more and more features. Um, I hope you really like it. And I, if you meet me in game, I would love to see your fur. Um, the whole reason I made this is because I wanted fur and I want other people to have fur too. So thanks for watching and you have a good day. Bye.